following video. The AGM-114 Hellfire is a short-range tactical missile in use by over two dozen countries. It is mostly used for land attack missions and has seen widespread employment in the global war on terror. The Hellfire is predominantly air-launched, although it has also seen limited deployment on sea platforms. But now the missile is used as everything from an anti-personnel weapon to bunker buster. Now let's discuss the Hellfire development. The United States began developing the AGM-114 Hellfire in 1972 to address the Army's requirement for a helicopter-launched anti-tank missile to counter Soviet armor formations at standoff range. Soviet armor outnumbered that of NATO and posed a central threat in a potential invasion of Europe. Acknowledging this issue, the Marine Corps established a similar requirement and joined the Hellfire development program in 1978. Operational testing for the Hellfire ran between 1978 and 1981, and production began in 1982. The missile was originally designated HELFIRE, -E, or Helleborne Laser Fire and Forget Missile. The U.S. Army later adopted the colloquial Hellfire as the official name. The Hellfire mission set has expanded significantly since its inception. Today, the missile is used to target bunkers, radars, communications equipment, small buildings, fast attack craft, and slow-moving or hovering helicopters. Hellfire capabilities have improved over decades of development to tackle this wider range of targets as well as to address countermeasures and obscurance and improve general mission efficacy and became the first Hellfire missile to feature a tandem warhead which consisted of two charges, one to set off the reactive armor and a second to punch through the tank. The United States also developed AGM-114K in the 1990s the first of the so-called Hellfire 2 systems. Designed to improve lethality and operate better in a countermeasure or obscured environment, it featured several enhancements over previous models. These upgrades included a new digital autopilot, a larger warhead, an improved seeker and reprogrammable software used to select different attack patterns in which to approach and strike its target. The K variant was also the first Hellfire capable of reacquiring its target after losing its laser lock. Later derivatives improved upon the missile's warhead, first decreasing warhead sensitivity to prevent actual detonation, and later adding a blast fragmentation sleeve to increase effectiveness against unarmored targets. Talking about the specification, the AGM-114 measures between 1.63 and 1.75 meters in length, is 0.178 meters in diameter, and weighs 45 to 48.5 kilograms. They have a range of 7 to 11 kilometers while carrying a payload of 8 to 11 kilograms. The missile flies at subsonic speeds to a maximum of Mach 1.3, 450 meters per second. The tactical missiles are propelled by a single-stage, single-thrust, solid propellant motor. When thrust exceeds 500 to 600 pounds, the missile leaves the rail. Based on a 10G acceleration parameter, arming occurs between 150 to 300 meters after launch. Maximum velocity of the missile is 950 miles per hour. Maximum standoff range is a function of missile performance, launch platform altitude versus target altitude, visibility, and cloud cover. Remote designation allows the launch aircraft to stand off at greater distances from the target. This standoff range can be out to the maximum missile effective engagement range. There are different techniques for tactical employment of the Hellfire missile on the battlefield. These techniques are ultimately driven by the two engagement methods by which the missile can be controlled to the target, autonomous and remote. An autonomous engagement requires the aircraft launching the missile to guide it all the way to the target after the missile is away. In this method, a single aircraft and its crew will locate, identify, fire, and guide the missile until destruction of the target, in the same way an M2 or M3 Bradley crew employs its tow missiles.
In contrast, a remote engagement requires an aircraft to serve as a launch platform. Providing a missile for another aircraft or ground observer designating with a laser to guide the missile to its intended target. Here are the various U.S. platforms across the service who carry the Hellfire missile. The Army's platform, we have AH-64 Apache Helicopter, OH-58 Kiowa Warrior, AH-1W Super Cobra, AH-1Z Viper, MQ-1C Gray Eagle UAS, and Special Operations Aircraft. The Navy's platform, they are SH-60B and HH-60H Seahawk. While the Marine Corps, they are KC-130J Tanker and AH-1W Super Cobra. The last U.S. platform is the Air Force's MQ-1 Predator and MQ-9 Reaper UCAVs. The United States primarily employs the AGM-114 Longbow and Romeo today due to their guidance and multi-mission capability, respectively. Foreign operators appear to use these variants as well as the earlier AGM-114K. For the last part, let's talk about the Hellfire service history. The United States has deployed the Hellfire missile in numerous combat operations. These include Operation Just Cause, Panama, 1989, Operation Desert Storm and Shield, Iraq, 1991, Operation Allied Force, Yugoslavia, 1999, Operation Enduring Freedom, Afghanistan, 2001, and Operation Iraqi Freedom, Iraq, 2003, as well as various conflicts and targeted killings involved in the War on Terror. In 1999, the U.S. Air Force began a program to equip its unmanned, surveillance-focused MQ-1 Predator drone with the Hellfire. The Predator first flight tested a Hellfire in January 2001 and fired one in combat in October 2001. The Predator-Hellfire combination proved to be popular. Between 1998 and 2018, the Defense Department procured over 71,500 Hellfire missiles at a cost of $7.2 billion. In 1992, the Government Accountability Office reviewed the missile's performance during Operations Desert Storm and Desert Shield. The GAO found that Hellfires fired between October 1990 and February 1991 had a 79% hit rate, notably under the Army's 90% requirement. The GAO has not conducted a publicly available assessment of Hellfire performance since, however, and only the older AGM-114A and C missiles were used in Desert Storm and Desert Shield. Outside of the United States, here are the nations that use the Hellfire. International operators also have used the missile in counterinsurgency operations. France, for example, has employed Hellfire missiles against militant groups in Mali and northern Africa. Iraq has also used Hellfire missiles against ISIS fighters within its territory. We conclude that the Hellfire's finest hours came in the 1991 Persian Gulf War, when Army Apaches claimed 500 Iraq tank kills with the missiles. That's not even counting Hellfire kills achieved by AH-1 Cobras. It's one of the reasons why the missiles became America's favorite.